this is an update to a demo I did of responsive design and showing some of the new capabilities in 12.13. First, let's see how it actually behaves at runtime. We have a page, um, and when the page is wide, we have this set of information on the left side. When we make the page a bit narrower, the information on the left disappears. It's not completely disappeared, it's basically just here in a panel drawer on the right side. Okay, so still there, can expand and collapse it as needed and when we're in a wider mode it goes like this. Now this is very useful for example if you're designing a user interface that would go on an iPad. So let's look at our iPad emulator. This is what you're seeing here. And this is the iPad in landscape. Again everything is in here on the left, everything is on a single page and if we switch the iPad and rotate it to portrait mode the things on the left basically disappear. Okay, And on the right side we have this little pop-up with the extra information. Okay. So this is what people refer to as responsive design, adjusting to, for example, how the page is layout. Now let's look at how we actually implement this. So to implement it I used a simpler demo. So in the simpler demo what you're going to see is buttons, so button 1 and button 3, and when we go into a narrow page button 1 disappears and we get this little pop up on the left, on the right, sorry, with the information, with the additional button that went missing. Now you probably noticed that over here this is called button 1 and over here it will be called button 2, but at the end of the day what you want to do is basically just replicate the same components on the right side. So how do you achieve it? In our JDeveloper project what we can do now is define the needed style sheets that previously needed to be inside a specific page in the skin. Okay, so at the skin level for our application we're defining a wide style and a narrow style and then we're assigning it values for the display property wide is inline and narrow is none. Basically means that by default the narrow style is not going to be shown and the wide style is going to be seen. However, we have a media query here and basically when the screen becomes smaller than 950 pixels what we're doing is we're switching the two. So narrow suddenly is displayed and wide is hidden. Then in our page, our page is actually based on a template so let me show you our template. In our template we basically have a grid layout with three cells. Cell 1, what you're seeing basically on the left um, it's a narrow cell and what we're saying here is that the content here is going to be displayed in a wide mode. This is what the style class says. The middle, the grids cell that sits in the middle doesn't actually change, it's always the same. And then the grid cell that is on the right side has the panel drawer in it and this one is set to narrow. So by default you're not going to see that part of the screen. But when we're going into a smaller mode, a narrow mode, this is going to pop up, this is going to disappear. Okay. Each one of our grid cells has a panel group layout in it, which the style class is applied to, and then a facet in it, which is where we're going to drop our content. And then when we have this template in place, we can simply create a page based on this template, drop, for example, the three buttons that you saw into each one of the areas, and that's it. That's all you need in order to implement a responsive design. You can get the code from my blog. One more thing to remember, your WebXML, there's a property called Disable Content Compression. This one needs to be set to true. Okay. So good luck developing responsive UIs.